Hello everyone. I'm super happy to announce that the SBA is now open for applications. So you can apply for Vet Cert, Hub Zone, Women Owned, and EDWOSB, as well as 8A, all in the same portal now. If you have an account in the, S uh, the MBA Loan Portal or Vet Cert, you can use that same email and password here. If you have an existing account in WOSB, EDWSB, or HubZone, you have to create a new account to apply. And to report a change for your business um, for a current certification, you have to use these particular websites. So entity-owned firms cannot yet apply for certification, uh, but that will be available soon. So if you are um, a human-owned firm, you are free to proceed. So the first thing you want to do if you're completely new to this process, you know, you don't have an apex counselor or coach or any of those things, what I found is really handy to figure out if, you know, there's even a propensity for what it is that you do. So I went ahead and answered the first set of questions for myself to test this use case. And then I'm just going to pop my primary Nix code in here so that you can see what happens. And I recommend you guys do this. You can even do it with more than one Nix code. So there are plenty. I'm going to keep it at the 541990 for now because that is where most of my revenue comes in. All right. Yes, I'm generating revenue. We have a track record of delivering quality goods and services on time and within budget. Yes. Can you invoice and receive payments electronically? Yes. Can you cover your costs? Yes. So this is your ready. And keep in mind that these questions are posed like this for a reason. If you can't do any of these things, or maybe you can do some of these things, put the, those that you can't do on your to-do list and start working on that. Yes, I own a business located in the U.S. Do you believe your office is located in a hub zone? I know that it is. We are already HubZone certified. And do you believe that 35% of your employees? Yes, I more than believe that. Now, um, HubZone is the only geographical NAICS and you can pop your address in just by going to Google and pun punching in a HubZone map. Should be the first thing to come up. Make sure you land on an SBA website and that will allow you to search for your address. Yes, I'm registered in SAM, and let's see what they're considering financial limits to be. So here are sort of the financial 8A program qualification criteria. In this case, we're going to go ahead and say yes, and down and next. Notice these are checking off as I go through them. Now it's recommending resources. That's actually very cool. It's recommending resources here. Can you provide financial statements? Yes. And do you affirm that neither business nor its owners have ever been debarred or suspended? Of course I can. Now this is more like it. So now it's recommending the programs that I qualify based on the answers that I created. So going down here, you can start with preparing and here's your hub zone calculator. So I'm gonna go with start preparing. That leads us to the next step. Here are three steps to get you ready. Prepare and gather your documents. I do recommend for somebody who has done hundreds, if not thousands of certifications or in part assisted with challenges related to those certifications, I highly recommend gather your documents first. Have them reviewed even, perhaps. That way you aren't in the waiting period. Um, I can't say that it's been more than like 48 hours since the system has been back up. So I haven't seen a, an application successfully processed, but I was able to get through my woman owned small business again in just about 20 minutes. And some of the challenges that I faced last time were a completely non-issue this time. Select business type for document list. Oh, coming soon. These are all coming soon. Now you might be able to look for the old list, probably still up. Yes, here, here's the old one. So by and large, it may have some changes, but I don't expect it, that to change too much because the rules do not change just the software that you're using, the portal itself. All right, now, of course, you do have to log in in order um, to be able to proceed. However, you can click here for an application preview. 
And this is a slideshow, essentially, of what you're going to see. Um, this we just did. It's the should I apply. All right, here we go. Login landing page. So if you do have an invitation code, make sure that you enter the code there. All right, first step that you are inputting information is going to be to claim your business, your UEI, your cage code, your business bank account number, exactly as it was provided in SAM, as well as your taxpayer identification number, TIN, otherwise known as an EIN. Those are the same thing. You click find and hopefully your entity will appear. Mine did. This is sort of what that looks like. And then you will click claim on whichever one is the correct one. If someone else has already claimed the company, you might see an error message of this nature. All right, now is where you select the program that you want to apply for. And notice you can select more than one at once. So this is a huge advantage because, you know, those of you who already have multiple certifications know that a lot of this is repetitious, right? So you're submitting the same stuff to a different entity. So SBA's attempt to streamline this process surely does seem like a value add to us on this side who are struggling through them. All right, you can assign a delegate to your application. So if you are working with a consultant, a third party, someone to do it for you at the end of the day you do need to own the application and you want to assign that individual as a delegate they can easily be removed at any time as well so you'll need their first name their last name and email address and they will be invited to create the account and in sections on your behalf the owner of the company will likely still need to do their own attestation, you should be doing your own attestation and be sure to pass any questions that you have along to your delegate. All right, you will then invite your delegate and you will select your business structure. Now, right now, as of October 18th, 2024, um, there is a notice on the website again that says that the individual is the only one you'll be able to do. The organization is an entity owned firm, which would be, you know, a lot of franchises. So those are coming soon. They're not yet available as of today, as per the notice on the website. Sorry for that confusion, guys. All right, moving right along here. Ownership, individual, this is where you're going to put your first name, last name, ownership percentage, etc. Ownership, individual, uh, your phone number, email address, and whether or not you're claiming social disadvantage. Now, if you are going through this process, applying for 8A to have your social disadvantage ready, and that would be focused on two instances. So this is the ownership and organization information, control and operations. So this goes into your management structure. If there is anybody else, um, management team that's not an owner, include officers, directors, board of directors, etc., as applicable. All right, eligible program selection. So uh, earlier in the video, I was selected for four. This is just a PDF, so this isn't real time. I imagine that veteran and service disabled veteran are not going to be open to me once I do actually get in there to apply. I did already submit my woman owned. I did not do these ones we have, but I did not add these ones on. 8A is more of a long-term, the economically disadvantaged woman-owned small business. I uh, you to you, be sure to check the NAICS list for that particular set aside. And economically disadvantaged woman-owned small businesses are for the most part NAICS based. And there is a PDF guide to show you how this code qualifies for which one or is utilized in which industry. All right, next is gonna be your questionnaire. Now, if you're going for all of them, you have to fill out every single section, um, but it's all in one screen, which is definitely cool rather than five different processes. So here's your questionnaire continued. So if you selected all of those, you can see that's two screens of, we'll call them cards. Um, the SBA used to call the woman-owned small business that looked similar to that. 
All right, these are 8A specific questions. So if you have opted for the 8A program due to this industry, I would recommend not entering into 8A. You have to have some level of past performance before you'll be able to get into 8A. So I would say plan to put that on the long-term plan. You know, unless you have been told by the government, hey, an 8A program, if you were 8A, I could buy from you. You know, then in that case, if you have the experience, it may be a different scenario. But check with your Apex counselor, your coach, your consultant, or a uh, business development specialist to confirm that has experience in this industry. All right, my SBA, this is 8A specific continued. So these are up to 10 of your largest projects. If you don't have projects to put in, then you should not yet apply. So I want to say the minimum is three, but please don't quote me on that. Um, there may not be a minimum, but if you have only had one customer in the last year, you might not be ready. for these. All right, core program eligibility. So this is going to go over whether or not you've been approved by a third party certifier. Does this and you can see who is here approved as a third party certifier. So they do. Some of them, I know WeBank does charge a nominal fee that works on a sliding scale, um, and they do ask for more documents because that is, um, the does carry weight in other areas of business as well, not just the federal government. And then if you have received a decision from a third party certifier, you'll be able to put in the name and the certification and, uh, all right, core business information, um, structure, ownership, or name change in the last two years, applicant business have a franchise agreement, and I'll just select that which is applicable here. You may have to explain the resources you shared. I always say what they ask for, but if there is an explanation required, it makes sense to just go ahead and preemptively explain it rather than waiting for them to turn around and say, oh, hey, we need more information. All right, here's another explanation. Nature of services shared. Company have any agreements or receive financial support that may influence ownership or control? And if you're not sure what ownership and control means, please do refer to the ECFR and look up the rules surrounding the program that you're interested in because ownership and control is a big part of uh, making sure that your time spent here is not in vain. There are certain duties as the qualifying individual that you must have, including day-to-day -day operations. And applicant doing, if you have a DBA, that would be this area here. Professional licenses, if you are you know, an environmental doing asbestos and abatement, there are certifications for those. If you are providing cybersecurity services that require certification, um, specific a general contractor needs to be licensed. So those would go in this area. All right, core business WSB and EDWSB. This is going to be your third party certification. Uh, looking to certified by a third party certifier. You can elect those here. I feel like this is repetitive. We just saw that on a previous screen in a little bit of a different format but I can't speak to it because I didn't see that when I was doing it. All right, individual contributor identifying contact information. So if you are married and you're applying for EDWSB, your spouse will need to receive an invite to complete their portion of the application. All right, this is individual contributor for federal relationships. If your sister is, a, or if your spouse is a GS 13 or above, um, you know, there are additional questions that you will need to answer there. Individual contributor ownership and control. Um, be anybody who manages day-to-day -day, uh, operations in your absence. Um, any board of directors, they'll have to be invited to their section as well, and that's what that looks like. Business relationships. Do any of your immediate family members own a business that conducts business with the applicant business? So if you're subbing out work to your spouse's business or your uncle's business, not necessarily your uncle, it's his immediate family. So mother, mother father, spouse, kids, uh, I believe. Individual contributor, 8A prior familial involvement. Um, see they're getting pretty explanations. They're being thorough as they have to. 
or taxpayer dollars we're talking about. And my SBA certifications, this is the 8A character. So this is specific for 8A applicants and you will have to answer additional questions, on the other names you've gone by, any trouble you've been in the past, etc. Here is the disadvantage narrative. Excuse me. Disadvantage narrative is no longer a PDF upload. You just can go ahead and enter your answers right into the UI, which is awesome. All right, economic disadvantage, assets. There we go. Same, continued, continued. Stocks, bonds, mutual funds. Not a whole lot of change there. You're entering a whole lot more information than that which you're uploading. I can tell that much. All right, mortgage information. This is sort of evaluating your net worth. If you have additional mortgages, home equity loans, or lines of credit on your other real estate, you'll add those here. Vehicle information. Other personal property or assets. The rest should be just the 8A. Yep. And then, oh, here are the hub zone. All right. Unpaid taxes. Hub zone business relationships. So if any owners have a vested interest in another firm. And here's where we're going to upload our documents. So this is the documents that are going to prove everything that you have said to be true. And it's all in one place rather than scattered on random pages. So that's definitely a value add. So meeting minutes, if you know, if your bylaws say that, you know, you have multiple owners and when decisions are made, there will be a meeting and the veteran can't be overruled. For example, there has to be meeting minutes supplied that support those bylaws. Not very common with single member LLCs who just have operating agreements, but definitely common with S-Corps. And here are your proof of citizenship, your taxes, individual tax returns, wage and tax statements. So it doesn't look like we're gonna have to enter manually all of the line items on our tax returns anymore that is awesome all right contributor invitations so you'll be able to see all your contributor invitations the statuses of those um, if you have multiple owners you know you may not be able to move forward with submission until all of them complete their uh, invitation and application submissions. Okay, so this is your attestation. This is the part that you, as the business owner, as the qualifying individual, have to complete. Please do not let anybody complete this on your behalf or log into your account to do so. You will still be held liable if it ever came down to it. All right, this is what your firm dashboard is going to look like. They give you a countdown. So 120 days, it looks like, and that's probably because this example we were applying for all of them i'm guessing let's see maybe i'll just log in and, and see what mine looks like i didn't see that initially actually it looks like it's a draft so your initial application it looks like they're giving you 120 days to complete it after you start it and then if you ever want to withdraw rather than taking a denial you can do so here all right, this is a messaging center built in. Interesting. Communicate directly with SBA there, apparently. So that's that. And I hope you are as excited as I am about this system. I literally did get through my WOSB in like 18 minutes yesterday. And I can't speak to how fast the review process will go yet but i will certainly keep you guys posted thanks for joining in let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you get stuck in this process we are happy to help you navigate